to worship and prayer, Mr. Distinguished Group. Please sit. Hello, hello. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. The room is pretty good, but the echo is terrible. Uh, I'm going to talk about privacy. It's going to be difficult to talk about privacy in three hours. I spent my life, 58 years, work on the privacy. I'm still learning. But I'm going to spend five minutes talk about my career a little bit. I've been in public service for 58 years in the United States. I've got a lot of award, a lot of commendation for solving many difficult cases. Actually, in my life, I only did one thing. It's made impossible possible. You all know Superman, right? What Superman, when Superman was born? Anybody know? Superman. Which year? Which year? Was born? 1938. The author invented Superman. So I was born in 1938 too. Same year, Superman made same age, 82. What do you think that's, sir, that's 1938 Superman looks like? What do you think Superman looks like today? That's Superman looks like. I was born in China, 1938. Mm -hmm. 1957, I graduated from Taiwan Police College. Very young person. And I uh, became a police officer. Actually, in high school, I want to play basketball. I don't want to be a police officer. However, I'm just my day. My coach, Say, Henry, when you grow up another two feet, come back to play basketball. So I decide to marry a wife. She is the basketball team captain at the Taiwan Normal University. I thought she wanted to be famous. Then I can travel with her around the world. But she tried so hard. I never met the big league. So two of us doesn't know what happened, and Pierre yelled me, you buy me for dinner. You know, you heard yell me before? Yes? He's an NBA star. He's seven two. So that's why I cannot play big league. So I become a good officer in charge investigation. Then in 1964, I went to the United States. 75, I started working at the NYU Medical Center. From 65 to 75, I got my doctor degree from NYU. I worked 10 years, day and night. Worked in the hospital, study, during lunch, dinner, I have to work in a restaurant. Weekend, I have to teach Kung Fu and Karate to pay the tuition. So difficult to get the doctor degree. But now it's so easy. I just give 20 minute commencement speech to give me a doctor degree. I talk to the Williams Law School. They give me honorary doctor of law. I share with the student. There are three type of people in the world. Some people make things happen. Some watch things happen. Where others wonder what has happened. Is that true? Yes. You are the first two people make things happen. That makes the differences can change. 
not too long ago, I gave that talk to St. Joseph College. They gave me an honorary doctorate degree in literature. And uh, I was sharing a student will have to create a life of purpose, uh, work hard, passion, that you can achieve. So now, I got 31 honorary doctor to do now. I don't even see they want to give me a doctor of music. So I said, well, I really need one. You don't give it to me. I don't want it enough. You keep giving it to me. I joined University of New Haven, Star and Forensic Science Program in 1975. And uh, 75, I only have two students, no laboratory. But now, become one of uh, the better programs in the United States. Also, we have a PhD student, Mahama is here. Where are you sitting? Where's Mahama? Oh, yeah. Say hello to everybody. He's a professor now, teaching at some mega national university. In 1976, I become the chief of the laboratory, state police forensic laboratory. We developed an excellent program. I spent so much time in the crime scene, in the laboratory, in the courtroom. 1998, I became the commissioner, chief of the police, we charge state police, become the first agent ever in charge the uh, American state police department. We develop new patrol system. We use helicopter vertical patrol. We have new communication system. We start implement big data based. We're doing a lot of DNA work. We have a missing person. Uh, we also, every time I go to the police, we have a lot of uh, privacy, a lot of laboratory work. So 19, uh, 2010, I retired fifth time back to the university. Now we have a special training program go around the world doing different training, teach the leadership with the become U.S. cold case center. Solving all the cold cases. I've been working with 47 countries, meet a lot of world leaders, wrote a lot of books, a lot of newspapers, got a lot of medals, and uh, they say I'm one of the 10 most famous Asian in the United States. This now a history book. Put my picture in there. So I become a history book. Uh, recently they have another history book. Also put my picture in there. So I'm really old. I never even drink one of my coffee mug. Now in the US is twenty six dollars. One of my autograph signature card is twenty four dollars. Later I will give you whoever answered the question correctly, I'll give you an autograph picture. In the US you can auction out twenty four dollars. Uh, this cooler four hundred and ninety eight dollars. In the United States, when you get famous, everything becomes valuable. Uh, now I wash my hand, retired. So I've been traveling around, giving lectures to different countries. Last time was in India, and uh, we have to eat the food. So I let my wife eat first. If five minutes, she still stand up, then I eat. That's my wife. Thank you. USA Today, this 25 event, that changed the world of history. They sent me a copy 
25 cases, four came up those with the regulated, the regulated bulk. We work a lot of cases from 9-11 to Kennedy assassination to Clinton, Monica, to Kobe Bryant, O.J. Simpson, all of those cases uh, was part of it. Dana Fishing, who work on a lot of world case, I even have a TV show. But CSR looks like a crime scene investigation is easy. They're always middle of the night, in the dark. In real life, the state or land, crime scene people have no choice. Given big storm, you'll have to call to investigate. CSI, the movie, they stand for pic stand up for picture. Land up for picture. We go to crime scene said, see, take a picture. And, uh, but our picture is much better. CSI walk to the scene. They use a flashlight. Any kind of flashlight, the evidence come up. Two detectives, they just kill them. So three detectives, what happened? How many light they use? Three, right? Okay. So we at the scene, we use all kind of light source. Laser, low light, but we still can have on evidence. People think we're terrible. We're not good as the movie. We use a lot of equipment at the crime scene. CSI instrument, we put the victim's evidence in their suspect's picture come up. Of course, no such instrument. But what many times you work in crime scene, we do got information. This is a homicide victim. I got to the scene. Detective said, Dr. Lee, what happened to me? What happened to me? Okay. Good night, Tom. Jimmy Call. You're right. Give him a hand. He just got shot. It's on the t-shirt say. I just got shot. We said bullet. Now, they say, where can you find information? Where can we find the information? <laughs> Just read the t-shirt. The phone number, 838-0010. You call that number. You got information. CSI, Embassy Kingdom. They think it's one man, one woman, one case of man with a gorgeous woman. That's their case. We work at the crime scene. Also, it's one man work, the rest are watching. One man work, the rest are watching. That's my life. Always one man work, the rest are watching. Here I am, the rest are watching. I'm working, the rest are watching. Even in Taiwan, I'm one man exam, the rest are watching. I'm working. When you become commissioner, you go to crime scene. Seven people lift the table. They're all watching. CSI, when they solve the case, they all got that gorgeous lady hump. I never have a beautiful woman hump. Once in a while, you go to San Francisco, an ugly man hump. Sometimes they want to kiss you, a man, not a woman. So CSI never have any stress. But work in the crime scene, we have a lot of stress. Because if you don't handle correctly, fairly, objectively, maybe you can start it right. And uh, Bernie, Maybe if you don't care for the secondary bomb can charge, can take off. Crime scene, 
There are a lot of complications about the general procedure. Unfortunately, I only bring a couple copies of book. Whoever uh, who is in charge. Dr. Brahan? You're in charge, okay? I will give you the book. They have different books, crime scene islands. So you are welcome uh, to have copies. I made some electronic copy. Where my where's my wife? Without her, I don't even know. Ah, oh, yes. Okay, I made a, a lot of electronic copy. Much easier instead of the hard copy. So, of course, who want a copy? Who want a copy? Anybody else want a copy? So make sure they got copy. Hey, I can see the doctor Brand. The crime scene, the first scene is security scene. Actually, the forensic work is. This You just gave that one. There's three stages. The first stage, what we do is secure the scene, protect the scene, do a crunchy survey, and recognition of the evidence. That usually the uniform police, the emergency people, first responder, and crunchy investigator they do. The second stage, we do the documentation, Enhancement, collection, preservation. So usually forensic scientists and CSI. The third state is goes to the portal. People testify. Evaluation, interpretation, reconstruction, and testing. Those crazy guys are available and some of my books also you can get from uh, YouTube and Internet. If you really need one, let me know. Those procedures, the crunchy, one important thing, don't eat or drink. Many times people make mistakes and um, of course the security is so important. Then we start work on recognition, documentation, identification, reconstruction. So many equipment we can use. The United States crime scene very important. The first thing you have to get the warrant. In other words, without a legal document, you cannot search. Except some emergency situation, they can need first aid, or you get the permission. Otherwise, to protect the citizen, we cannot just go to somebody's house or property to search. French security, we have to protect the scene. But many times the scene, not much you can protect. For example, a crime scene in a busy highway. But that crime scene might get there. The crime scene already completely contaminated. Many times, a crime scene is the detective. He doesn't know the step into the blood and a change alter the scene. For example, here, The body is here. Who is stand into the blood? The detectives, police officers. Now you want a lot of shoe print. Forensic people can spend months to work on those shoe print, but that's useless. 
that would call a blanket tramp procedure. The Elijah Hurts, the officer, got to the scene and bring the body, got up and walk away. They circle the body. Uh, here, once you circle the body, the scene already contained. So, the first thing we have to teach is the first line officer have to protect the scene. The emergency people, fire, rescue people, also have to protect the scene. Even medical examiner have to learn. In this case, the medical examiner touch the body, then use the towel to clean the head. After he cleaned the head, he just roll on the body. When I got to the scene, I said, who did that? Scene already contaminated. Here another example. The medical examiner, pathologist, got to the scene before me. Police said Dr. Lee is on the way. They said, oh, we know Dr. Lee like to study ballistics. He took some towel out of the closet, put on the ballistic, and he stepped over. So those called contamination of the scene. This case happened in Los Angeles. For 30 years of saw, become a cold case. They asked us to assist who was able to call the shoe print. The shoe print never matched him. Then finally, the police officer confessed. He said, he was at the scene, he left the shoe print. So many years to work on something which is useless. So some kind of weather and the environment problem, not much we can do. However, you have to learn how to protect those so you can quickly get the vehicle or you see them away. Should not let all the police officers' car. Uh, again, you contaminate the scene. For example, this case, of 108 people spent at the scene in that small place. So by the time you really look at the pattern evidence, it's all changed. So crisis protection Sometimes crimes seem pretty dangerous. When we get there, for example, this case of a biological weapon. So you have to learn to protect yourself. For example, this crime team get there and have pipe bombs. So if you don't careful, if you trigger the bomb, you yourself and then the team, everybody die. Many times, for example, this case, a lawyer commits suicide, except he had AIDS and hepatitis. Uh, when we handle the scene, you have to learn how to protect yourself. So crunchy security, safety is very important. The next thing you have to worry about it is the crunchy in a popular, dense area, a lot of people. When something happens, everybody starts watching. If the police, you don't handle correctly, for example, in the United States, in a black, black neighborhood, if a white officer shot somebody, you have to handle very quick, very careful, otherwise, they want to start a riot. Once the riot starts, forget about cracks, run for your life. You have to leave right away. Otherwise, people are going to get mad and angry. Many times have a big fire, so the crime scene, you have to be very careful. So common mistake is security. 
how to set the command post and get charged. In other words, the crime scene, you'll have to learn how to supervision. The commanding officer, very important, who is doing what, and quickly get the assessment. Then do a preliminary survey of the scene. Start document, pattern recognition, and interpretation. We're going to go over each one. Pattern evidence. This morning they talk about peace. My mark is a pattern evidence too. A collection of trace evidence. After that, then we will process for later. Fingerprint. Many times they get to the scene, they will collect latent fingerprint first. Now, you contaminate the trace evidence is contaminated. So the sequence is really important. Document and collecting latent evidence, measure this evidence, collect the evidence, sheet, blue chart, finally you reconstruct the scene. So we're going to go over each one later. Crime scene management. How to manage a crime scene? It's not an office. It's a collect a collection of experts. Many times, who is doing what? What the sequence? For example, that's Yale. University, law school. One day, they have a bomb explode. That's the final exam, last exam for the semester. This is a historical building. When we get to the scene, now, what should you do first? You rescue the people, or you put up the fire, or you try to save those so-called real poor. Many poor, only one in the world is in the basement because the bomb ruptured the water, start leaking into the basement. Or you try to find who set the bomb. <coughs> so simultaneously, you have to do a lot of work. So whoever in charge as to have a call, very cold and what to do. So usually you have a mobile prana. Initially the prana bed is pretty small. Now it's getting bigger, bigger, bigger. Recently some police department this crazy bag, so big, when you get to the street corner, you cannot make it a turn. You cannot go through the traffic anymore. So the bag becomes useless. So you have to know your city. For example, Baja. You cannot get the crazy bag through. Because last night, it took, us, took me almost three hours from the airport to get to the hotel. The traffic so congested. So when you respond to crime scene, you have to know what to do. So many times we go to crime scene, just use the helicopter because timing is so important. Once you get to crime scene, first you have to assess what situation. Is this a homicide, suicide, or just a rape, a song. Then you have to worry about safety issue, legal issue, security issue, forensic issue, domesticated issue, communication. You have to call your boss, call your co-worker who is supposed to report. Then my salmon, who is doing what? So those are the issue as a commander of the crime scene to have to worry about not just walk to the crime scene. 
for example, this is a highway shooting, and 18 cars involved. Traffic is so high, the crime scene can hack at it. We have to set a command post. What we did, they just found a table and a chair. That's my comment post. Because if you wait the crime scene back, probably three hours. So you have to assess the situation, do whatever what you can do. Start an investigation. Early days, the crime scene, the forensic lab is like that, crowded, backwards. Of course, today in U.S., all the crime laboratory have improved tremendously. A lot of training, a lot of resources available, so you can get international assistance, technical assistance legal assistant, so a crime scene commander, you have to have all those resources in the community. For example, that time in charge of all the university professor and their cell phone. Who is the best expert on what area, so I can call them, give us assistance. Equipment, today, we have so many new equipment now. The early days concept is collect the evidence, package, send to the laboratory to exam. The newer concept is to bring the laboratory to the scene to investigate. A lot of database, big database, which you can search. For example, FS. Codis, Sankar, Nymeg, all those database is available. The scene survey is probably the most difficult, but the most important thing in any practice. But very few textbooks to teach you how to do that. It's all experience. To walk through. Where's the point of entrance? Where's the point of exit? Target area, potential evidence. All those. For example, this four crimes. Four crimes. Each one have valuable, valuable pattern. The first one. A female body, 18 years old, found in Maine. Maine is the very north state in the U.S. Please stop. Naked. What did it tell us, the crime When you get there, use logic, huh? Yeah, they. they. She reported missing six months ago. But the weather, because very cool, not, not like a bank address, very cool. So the body will preserve. So that tells us this is a secondary thing. She was murdered someplace else and transport the body with nothing. So the investigator, very important, where is the property? As you can see, make the way stop. So you'll have to walk her candy the garment. More likely, you can walk this suspect. It's a collector in the US, a lot of men. Great kill the victim, but they collect their candy. I said, trophy. As a souvenir. Now, for example, we saw the case. We found the suspect of 64 pair of candies. 
be collected. So this case is a drug dealer. He was shot. Two shots in the head. Do you see that? When we get to the scene, we did not know he's a drug dealer. But he had a Rolex watch, you see, on his head. That tells you that's not a robbery. A robot gold watch, about 8,000 US dollars. So you'll have to read the scene if you can permit. This one, you see that? That's called a period spur. It tells us he was killed in that location, his heart pumping 11 times. That's called torture. It's not really want to kill them, but torture her. Use a knife, slash it. So each of the scene can give us information. Indoor, outdoor, primary scene, secondary scene, organized, unorganized, normal, or staged, dynamic, or passive. Those are very important for the investigator to distinguish. But unfortunately, no textbook can talk about this. Because most of the, the U.S. The professor has no direct experience. A graduate from the university, they start teaching Ramsey just by the book. This case becomes one of the famous cases in the United States happening in Utah. The victim is named Elizabeth Small. She is a millionaire's daughter, very rich family. Middle of the night, somebody gets to their house, kicked them. She disappeared. Fourteen months later, still did not want her. Subsequently, her father come to my office with both need out. Dr. Lee, you're our last hope. Can you help out? I said, I'm already retired, I really don't have time. But we're all human beings. Touch me. So I said, okay, why well, I'm going to Utah to take a look. That's their house on top of the mountain. Her room is the, this corner room. This is a dead end tree. Dead end big mansion. So right away tell us this is not the random hit. It's pre-planned. In other words, suspect already planned so well what to do this. Not to kill her, but to pick her. Usually we we'll look at the point of entry. Chimney, skyline, window, door. You have to study carefully. So-called process of elimination. You can eliminate those impossible. Whatever remains become problem. Who said that? The famous person. Anybody study? Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. Okay. Give her, a, give him a hand. That's your badge. Catch. Give it to your. Okay, Sherlock Holmes. So, criminal investigator also used to that logic. 
when you eliminate impossible, whatever becomes possible. So I looked at that, the whole house, that's the backyard. This is a little pass. That's the window, kitchen window. Here have a chair. Screen was hot. So that's more likely a point of entry. So we examine the window. It's a sharp cup. It's a knife. U-shaped cup with the bullet, a partial fingerprint, but no ridges. In other words, can I use for identification? But today, you can swap that for trace DNA. You don't have to do fingerprint. You can save that to do the trace DNA. Then we study the cup. We know. It's from outside. Somebody cut from outside to come in. Then you use deductive logic, in the logic. Point of entry, we are already identified. Have a chair. Can we found? Thank you, Mr. Dr. Sardinia Bastoni, for his workshop on the art and ethics of the scientific writing.